Hello everyone, welcome back to the ITVersity YouTube channel and as part of the roadmap to become a data engineer in 2025, let's look at the Azure specific skills. So in this particular video, we will first talk about the basic skills or the core Azure skills that a data engineer should have in 2025. And then we will also discuss the intermediate skill and some of the advanced uh, skills. And we will also have a look at the tools and why you need to master each of them. So let's jump in. Before we jump into the intermediate and advanced skills, let's first discuss the core skills. So I would like to categorize this into three sections. You can talk about storage and then you have databases and then you have ETL. Now, when you talk about storage, it's really important to understand the Azure blob storage. Now, this is the backbone for any kind of analytics that you're going to do in Azure. And this is a classic data lake. That means it can store any kind of data, structured, semi-structured, or even unstructured. And you can choose different uh, tiers or levels for your storage. So you have like hot, cool, archive, different, uh, different tiers you have to choose depending on your uh, use case. So the first thing that we need to understand is the backbone storage that is the Azure blob and the second is the database. Now when you talk about a relational database offering from Azure, it is none other than Azure database services. And in the database services, we have the Azure SQL database, which is a fully managed auto-scalable database service offered by Microsoft Azure and you get different engines to choose from. So this is something you need to master or, or have a look uh, if you want to become a data engineer because RDBMS is obviously part of any uh, project, whether you're a data engineer or not. And if you are talking about NoSQL databases, then Azure has a unique offering and that is called Cosmos DB. So Cosmos DB is the globally distributed multimodal NoSQL database. If you have gone through NoSQL databases, then you know there are different kind of NoSQL databases. And Cosmos DB tries to combine the different type of uh, or different models into one solution. And it is highly scalable. You can store any type of data globally distributed automatically scales. So NoSQL databases, especially Azure Cosmos DB is the product that you need to concentrate on. And next is the most powerful weapon in Azure's arsenal, none other than the classic ETL tool, ADF or Azure Data Factory. For a data engineer, this is the Swiss Army knife, right? So Azure Data Factory has around 90 built-in connectors that help you to seamlessly move data around and it can connect to on-prem environments, hybrid environments, cloud environments. You can design ETL pipelines, you can orchestrate them. So uh, ADF or Azure Data Factory is a must for a data engineer who specifically want to focus on Azure as their primary choice. Now, the next set of skills is probably intermediate to advanced, where we talk about big data, data warehousing, and real-time data analytics, starting with Azure Databricks, the fully managed Apache Spark offering on Azure. And that is something that everybody should be aware of and everybody should master. And if you look at Spark as a big data processing tool, then you can do many things with Apache Spark, uh, starting with normal SQL style of processing, machine learning, AI, and whatnot. So Azure Databricks is the classic big data processing solution that you should concentrate on. And then Azure has a very unique offering called Azure Synapse Analytics. So Synapse is a classic uh, platform as a service offering from Azure or a PaaS offering, I should say, where the original idea is to have a fully managed data warehouse in the cloud. Now, Synapse is not just a data warehouse. It does much more than that. Synapse is a single platform where you integrate data lake, data processing, big data analytics, orchestration, machine learning, everything in one place. So Azure Databricks, if you specifically want to concentrate on Apache Spark and leverage its possibilities as a big data processing engine, Synapse, if you want to take one step further and you need kind of like a single platform where you can integrate all these tools. So when you look at Synapse, it has Databricks inside, it has Data Factory inside, 
it has data lake inside the existing services but as a single platform so mastering synapse is a must if you are concentrating on azure and becoming a data engineer in 2025 now we cannot conclude uh, the discussion on intermediate uh, uh, tools without discussing about real-time data analytics, right? So Azure has Azure Stream Analytics, which allows you to run SQL queries to process data in real time. And then the, you have Azure Event Hub and IoT Hub. So these are the tools you need to concentrate on. Now Azure Event Hub allows you to collect events. So this can be log uh, logs getting generated in real time or social media events getting generated in real time and iot hub allows you to specifically collect iot data so a typical workflow would look like this you will have a lot of real time data coming in now it is if it is specific sensor data or iot data iot hub is the platform or the a tool that you use to collect it otherwise any other kind of real-time data this can be logs or social media feeds you collect through event hub and this will be given to azure stream analytics which allows you to explore real-time data using sql queries now what about workflow and orchestration like we discussed before the etl tool azure data factory gives you options for workflow orchestration right azure also offers managed airflow services where you can leverage the power of airflow to design complex workflows and automate them you also have azure monitor which is similar to the aws uh, uh, service called cloudwatch uh, but the difference in azure monitor is that it uses the power of ai to do anomaly detection from logs so you can watch all your metrics in real time from any service that you have launched in azure find out anomalies, find out spikes, you can take actions, all with the power of Azure Monitor. And like I said, it uses AI as well. Now, what about the elephant in the room, right? Artificial intelligence and machine learning. So, well, of course, being a data engineer, you have to be aware of this. So we have Azure Machine Learning, a specific uh, service for uh, creating scalable machine learning models and all. Uh, but if you look at Apache Spark, let's say Databricks, then we know that that offers uh, the power of machine learning. So being a data engineer, it's important to identify the tools which we can use for machine learning and having an understanding of deploying the models and watching them is also very important. So that's it. I thought I covered almost everything related to Azure, but the list is endless and there are new tools which are being released every day. Check out the entire playlist which talks about uh, the roadmap to become an, a, a data engineer in 2025 with platform specific skills here. And like, comment and share this video and subscribe to ITVersity channel if you have not done so. I'll see you next week with another video where we'll be talking about another platform specific skills. Thank you.